Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry version 12, and this is our automation series. And we are on to Chris's pre made. It's the bit that I've been waiting to get to. Um, love gambits. Obviously, MIDI QOL well, driving a lot of our automations, but Chris's brings now, in version 12, a whole raft of awesomeness. Um, so, just to bear in mind, caveat. This is still in beta, or beta, beta, however you pronounce it. Um, this is still in beta, so it is still being updated and made. It's not in final form. So if we encounter any little bits that don't quite work, don't panic. It's not necessarily the end state it's going to be in. Now, Chris, Amber, Michael, and all of the other people that are involved in helping with this, they are pumping out updates uh, approximately twice a day for the past couple of weeks. So they've got all of the structure in for the module, but they're working on individual items, individual spells and things at the moment. So they're dropping those in constantly, um, you know, making new ones and then correcting if there's little errors and things like that. So that caveat, um, yeah, it's not in its final form, but it's certainly good enough for us to be looking at and potentially using at this point. So, uh, Chris's pre made if I click that to bring it in, you'll notice that it wants to bring in Builder Bonus as well. Uh, so that is the only one it's dependent on these days. Yes, it interacts with lots of others. It interacts with MIDI, it interacts with Gambits, um, and, and things like that. But you don't need those bits. So this is a big part of one of the reasons why Chris is pre-made has taken quite a while to um, to get to the state it is. There's been a lot of rewrite of some of these big modules on the back end to remove a lot of the dependencies. Let's not rely on warp gate. Let's not rely on um, uh, uh, dthreads, which was a big one as well. So dthreads still isn't here. Um, and, well, that's a lie. dthreads is here but it's in a very different form that it, than it was um, because of significant changes it between V11 and V12, the way that conditions and effects are applied in the background. So DFEDS has been sort of torpedoed by foundry changes. Um, so trying to remove those dependencies has been a big job. So we're kind of sitting there kind of going, come on, hurry up and fix the mod. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's easy for us to say they've been working that absolute nuts off in the background. Um, so we don't need dthreads anymore for this and that's part of what we're going to get to. So the only thing we need is build a bonus. Now if you have problems installing this, you might have problems installing build a bonus. One of the reasons why is build a bonus, you need to be on the correct game engine or at least um, up, make sure your game engine is updated. So. Again, the stable version in V12 for the D&D game engine is 3.3.1 at the moment. Um, and that is likely to stay the default place um, to lock down on until the D&D uh, 4 comes out. And then we've got the 2024 D&D rules and all of that malarkey. There's going to be massive changes again. So this is the place to kind of go, right, I'm going to update to that and stop. And I'm not going to update any further in V12 for the game engine uh, until we've got those other things stable. Because these guys are going to have to go through this kind of process again, uh, which is a bit of a nightmare. Right, let's activate that because you're listening and not actually seeing anything awesome. So let's save those settings and of course that's going to bring that in. So this video is going to be in three parts. We're going to look at the compendium stuff um, that comes with Chris's. We're also going to look at the other actions that comes with Chris's and then we're going to look at, well, how has Chris and the team dealt with the Dfreds issue? So three main bits. Let's start off by looking at the compendium packs that come as part of Chris's premates. Now, the really nice thing is, is all of their compendium packs are called CPR. So we, we can see on the right hand side, we've got CPR actions there, um, CPR class features. So in the same way that gambits are GPS, uh, so we can tell which are his, we've got CPR. It's nice and easy to tell whose is whose and what it's doing. 
All right, so uh, looking at actions here. So we've got things like check and cover. We've got dash, disengage, dodge. And yes, we've got things like shove that we've already looked at that came in from a different source. We will get back to some of these things. Um, but we've got lots of things in there. We've got class features. So for Barbarian, we've got um, Totem Warrior, for example. We've got the Totem Spirit, uh, Wild Magic. Uh, for Pladins, we've got the Oaths and stuff like that. that. And again, these are not finished. These are all in here and either working or close to working being worked on but these are being added to constantly so if you're looking and kind of going oh but they've missed that thing well yeah they might have done they're working on it leave them alone <laughs> um what else we got we got um we've got items um so as you can see items <laughs> cpr ignore this it's a work in progress <laughs> they will get there uh they have very much focused on the spells sort of initially uh items are going to come last and i'm, I'm not sure if that's because the items are a little bit easier or, or quite what i don't know tackle the hard stuff first make sure they've got the infrastructure right um they've also got uh, let's look at those spells there's a whole bunch of them in here and again, they won't be generally tackling the spells that are quite straightforward. They're tackling the spells that are a bit more challenging, like Magic Missile. And we looked at that in a previous video because somebody was saying, like, how the heck do you handle that? It's an absolute nightmare. Well, that's what Chris and Gambit are really good at. Those teams are kind of going, this is a really difficult thing to implement. So that's what we're going to focus on and get working, which is just like, mwah, chef's kiss. Um, Misty Step all of this stuff is in here now as we've gone through this we've seen quite a number of these it's like oh hang on a minute that exists in the srd and as ddbi importer oh and it comes as midi as, as part of the midi srd oh and it comes as part of the mini item showcase and gambit's got a version and chris has got a version so there's lots of different versions some that work identical to each other some that work slightly different but of course you might not have all of those installed and i'm going to come back to that a bit later you might only have installed one or two so there's no drama that these are and in the next step of this video we're going to be looking about how we're choosing those and what what the the tool is to use that for doing that uh, yeah so we've got all these spells in lovely jubbly we've got some summons as well now again we've got no images in on this but as you can see this is what's being worked on you know uh, manifest mind shadow spirit spectral tentacle these guys are on it. It's incredible the amount of work that they've done, to be honest. So um, we we looked at Magic Missile before, so we've seen that. Um, but it's a, it's a nice one to show. So I am going to do it again. Uh, so we'll look, just check Sorryman here. I still haven't got it. No good. I haven't got Magic Missile on here. M. M I need. Come on, Mr. Golem. You need M. So if I drag Magic Missile over here and chuck it on, uh, the way this works, because rules as written, you choose, at first level even, you choose three targets uh, and it fires three bolts. Uh, each, um, each hit automatically and do their damage. But how do you, in Foundry, say, hey, I want to target three different things? Or... I want one bolt to hit that person and two bolts to hit that. That's a significant challenge. So let's target this poor little goblin and click magic missile. This is how Chris's does it. So it says, well, hang on a minute. These are the creatures you've got targeted. How many missiles do you want to hit this one creature? So let me cancel that and let me target Haley as well, which is just mean, and recast that magic missile. Now it's showing me there's two targets to choose from and I might say I want one to hit Haley, and for the goblin I can no longer select three for the goblin because one's already dedicated to Haley. So one at Haley, two at the goblin, that's your three missiles. You notice it's saying about do you want to skip dead and unconscious? So if I've got eight creatures selected and two of them are already dead, it, they won't appear in this list, which is, yeah. Quite nice, so you're not accidentally targeting corpses and wasting your, your damage output. So let's click OK. And there we go. So we had three missiles fire off. We got three animations of them. Two of them went straight for that goblin and gave it a good kick in. And one went and hit Haley. And of course, we have got in the chat, it says, you know, what's happened there? So 
Zoriman's damage. He's casting Magic Missile at Haley and the Goblin. And we've got our damage, uh, D4 plus one. Uh, and then that's applied. Uh, does it show which one that targets? That's Haley. And then if I expand targets, Goblin, and then the one at the bottom, Goblin. So you can see that actually we've distributed that damage appropriately across those three in accordance with what we did. So this is the kind of work that that Chris's team have been doing. And I have to keep saying Chris's team because it's tempting to keep saying just Chris because it's called Chris's pre-maids. Um, but there's an awful lot of work that goes on from Amber and Michael into this, let alone all of the extra people that help out with testing and ideas and all of that stuff. So really important. Um, so yeah, that's good. Uh, what's up? Let's try something else. Uh, Misty Step we've kind of seen before. What about Mouse Acid Arrow? Let's try that. Um, this should, there's no reason why this won't do exactly what we're expecting. Boom. Okay, so it's fired that. We've done that damage to the Goblin. It's automatically done its combat attack roll because we've got MIDI QOL doing that. And it has applied an effect to this Goblin, even though the Goblin's dead, of Melf's Acid Arrow that's going to last 12 seconds. In other words, another two rounds. Um, and that's going to deal damage over time. Have I still got these chaps in combat? I haven't. So obviously if I was in combat, that would be continuing to apply that damage each round as per Melf's spell description. How it should work. Uh, let's clear you off because uh, and heal you up again. So um, I haven't tested a lot of these myself because there's a lot to test. I haven't tested them yet. Um, so that's the first time I've, I've tried Melfs and straight out the box, that's going to do, uh, do the job we want it to, which is absolutely perfect. So of course, you can go in and play with all of these yourself, check that they work. You know, we've got things like Chain Lightning, Charm Person, um, lovely lovely jubbly but i don't want to get too stuck on just looking at stuff in the compendium for that what i want to do next is have a look at the um at the uh a couple of the settings in here for chris's pre-maids because there's more there's more than just the compendium stuff so there is a character backup okay so that you have the ability to back up a character um i believe it just works like there we go Backup uh, actor, backup compendium, so you can select where you're backing them up to, automatically back them up whenever you want, so every day. So if you've got your characters perfect and, or you want to mess around with them like I tend to do, I can actually back them up so they're less likely to disappear or things go hideous. That might be nice. Uh, module integration here. Now, I've already been through just having a little play to make, you know, actually looking at a couple of bits before doing this video. Uh, as you can see, there are options here to colorize title bar icon. I'll tell you what we're talking about when we get to the next section of the video. Um, but you can see it saying, hey, look, we're integrating with builder bonus here, overlapping spell effects. So if builder bonus is applying an effect and Chris's is applying a different effect, uh, do you want them to overlap and do both of them or not? Um, and the answer might be yes you do because there might be an animation on the actor with the sword um, and also an animation on the victim of that attack. So yeah, do both. Uh, integration with Gambit pre-made options. So regarding Gambit's homebrew stuff, MIDI item showcase, are we using the, the stuff from there? So the Unarthur, Kana, the, um, the homebrew stuff. We can include that stuff if we want to. Spotlight Omni Search Summons. So there's integration with Ripper's Spotlight. It does not mean that you need to have MIDI Item Showcase or Gambits or Ripper's Omni Search. You don't need to have them. They're not dependents. But if you do have them, you can use that to search for your summons. So this one says, when enabled, you can use Spotlight Omni Search to summon creatures from your monster compendium. Okay, brilliant. So we can just search and go, oh yeah, so you want a wolf? Search, wolf, we can find that from the summons compendium, chuck it out, there we go. N really nice integration. And Omni Search has become one of my kind of must-have modules. It does, it just sits there and does nothing but when you need it, you really need it. Uh, the next line is also integration with Ripper's Epic Rolls. Again, you do not need to use Epic Rolls. But if you do, some of the Chris's pre-made items will go, do you know what? This is an Epic Roll and it will automatically um, 
suggest an epic role for that particular activity, that saving throw, etc. How nice! Don't have to use it. In fact, I haven't got that clicked on. But if you've got, if you're using epic rolls and you want that kind of automation for calling it, it's built in for you. How amazing! Um, and there's an active visual effects buttons here. Enabled certain macros will add buttons to the VAE interface. So you can leave that on. It's a button, so you just don't click it if you don't want to use it. Uh, so lots of options there for us with this module integration, which is really nice. We have some mechanic options here. Applying MIDI QOL condition effects, yes or no. Uh, condition resistance and vulnerabilities. Uh, contextual ability saves. So in other words, if it calls for an ability save um, on an item or something from Chris's, it will communicate correctly with MIDI QOL about what that is. Um, same with skill checks. Uh, we've also got some options to disable special effects um, firearm support. So this specifically says from Critical Role's Gunslinger class. Um, so if you're using that, that might be something you want to look at. We've got options here to say that when we cast spells that are conjure type of spells, conjure animals, or whatever it might be, um, you can click this to allow the player to pick what the creature is rather than the DM having to do it. Um, and this last one here is about syncing, so matching the actor size with the token size. If you cast enlarge on your actor, your actor becomes a large token, but your token doesn't change size. This will link it so that actually your token will grow when that effect is applied to your actor. I mean, that actually, that makes sense, doesn't it? I'm going to pop that in there. Um, compendium options. Now, this is nice. We've got additional compendiums. So if we configure... This is the all of the compendiums that, and we're going to get to the next bit in a moment, when we're using the Medikit, it's going to look for in these compendiums of different things you could use to add automation to an item. That's going to make more sense when we get to it. Just bear in mind there is an option here to say, hey, yeah, I look in my personal folder, my personal compendium golem stuff, as well as looking in MIDI item community, as well as looking in Gambits, as well as looking in Chris's. But you can add or remove stuff. You might go, oh, well, I want to also want to include the SRD stuff. Well, that's really plain and non-automated, so you probably wouldn't. But you can create your own ones and tell it, yes, check those as well. And a monster compendiums as well. You can set what, uh, where you want it to pull monsters from. So from the monsters SRD, just from the DDB monsters, etc., etc. Now, it's, again, it's talking about compendiums. So over here, it's talking about the SRD monsters from there or the D&D &D Beyond monsters from here now um, I haven't got my monsters in for DDBI um, but that's what it's talking about do I want to pull from there or not that's nice interface options we're going to come back and look at for the end section of this video um, when we talk about the the, the um, dealing with the defreds uh, issue but there's a whole bunch of things in here automatic effect descriptions um, yeah when enabled effects without descriptions will automatically be filled in from the uh, from the origin item well i'm going to say yeah do that yes please i would have that on um at, you can read these for yourselves it's going to take us forever doing this video if we go through everything but we are going to enable the effect interface and we're going to enable the macro interface um and look at that at the last part of this now the last option in here that i want to look at right now is this hidden compendiums or this hidden compendium folders and hidden compendiums. So looking in my compendiums bar, look how much stuff I have. Look at it all. There's tons of it. Um, and I haven't even got the SRD one open. Um, <laughs> and, and you might find that actually it's just getting really, really busy in your compendiums folder. And you want to hide some stuff. Well, that's what these are. So let's look at hidden compendium folders. What folders have I got in my compendium? Uh, list over here. I've got creature features. I've got D&D &D Beyond. I've got D&D &D SRD items and spells monsters others Those are the folders. Well, let's say I want to go and get rid of the basic D&D &D SRD content Okay, let's confirm and we save and D&D &D Beyond is there others is there 
but we've lost that basic SRD. It's gone. I mean, it hasn't gone. It's a lie. It's not gone at all. It's just been hidden from view. So really nice. Really nice. Not necessary, but very nice. Let's go back to here. That we can hide the folders that we're not using, even with things like the SRD. We don't have a lot of choice for it, um, but we can hide it. Now, hidden compendiums itself is not about hiding folders, it's about hiding individual ones. So let's say, for example, I've got this Active Auras Zone Actors, which only has zone effects in. Well, I'm never going to go into that. I've got it in there as part of Active Auras. Um, I should be able to find that. Active Auras Zone Actors. I can click that and we're going to be able to hide that. I'm also going to get rid of this one above it, the Active Auras one. It's there. I'm just going to hide it for now. And we confirm. Uh, and once I come off that and come back again. Um, oh, that one's still there, but it has got rid of oh, that's a different one. That's the macros. Um, but it's hidden those ones for us. So really, really nice. If you're not wanting to have all of these things spamming your your chat, you can dump them in a folder, and uh, obviously, and tidy it up, or you can actually hide them. Um, I really, really like that. It's a small little thing. It just makes this compendium much bigger. And what we what I would suggest to do, and we're going to, after this video, one of the things we're going to move on to is looking at the individual items and going, right, what works for us? It animates and automates in the right way. And we're going to be in Golem stuff or whatever it might be. Uh, we're going to start dumping in the items that we know that item works exactly the way that we want to. That spell works exactly the way that we want to. That ability, it's like, oh, that's the Gambit's one I want to use. Oh, but that's the Chris's one I want to use. And I'm going to start dragging them into my own compendium. So all of Soriman's stuff is going to be, this is how his spells work. And I can put them in my own compendium knowing that they work. I don't need to go, oh, hang on a minute, which was the one that I wanted to use? I've got five different ver versions of Shove. Which one have I tried and tested and I'm happy with? I can't find it again. If I dump it all in my own compendium, beautiful. I can then hide the other compendiums out of them. They're still there. I can still omni-search for them if I need them um, or unhide them. But it's just going to give me my working model. Right, onwards. So, uh, what do I want to look at next? Let's close that. I want to look at, uh, and anybody who's used Chris's before will probably be familiar with the Medikit. So, um, before I do that, I'm going to uh, go into Haley and I'm going to go to D&D &D Beyond. Um, and I'm going to re-import Haley, which is going to basically reset her back to the D&D &D Beyond um, equipment, yeah, which is an improvement over the basic SRD stuff. Uh, I know some people have got some issues around the amount of junk that comes in with it, and they're not always perfect, and they might be a bit spammy, um, but we're going to bring that in. It's it's killed, um, it's incapacitated Haley for me for whatever reason. <laughs> I'm not sure if she's incapacitated on D and D Beyond or something, but it's brought her in like that. So that's essentially sort of reset her back to how she is on D and D Beyond. Um, and I'm going to do the same with Soriman. So we've got a number of spells in here that Soriman shouldn't have or hasn't got on D and D Beyond, and I believe it will remove the stuff that he's not supposed to have. It has indeed. Excellent. So it's just put reset him back to how he should be, in inverted commas. Uh, and it's also incapacitated him as well. So I'm not sure quite why it does that. That didn't used to, but there we go. Not the end of the world, is it? All right. Medikit. What the heck is Medikit? Let's open Soriman's character sheet. Um, and we are going to pick on an item, for example, Shocking Grasp. If I right-click and go to Edit... At the top, there's this little icon, it's blue in this case, that is, it, it's called the med kit. It looks, it's got a little plus on it. It looks like a, a medical bag. Apparently it wasn't supposed to originally. It wasn't supposed to look like a medical bag, but it kind of does, which is why everybody calls it the medikit. <laughs> Bit of an accident. Um, and if we click on that, this is saying it's blue because what it's saying is, hey, there is a Chris's pre-made for that item and it's already been applied. It's up to date 
with Chris's. If I use this drop down, I could actually say, no, do none. Notice it's changed this med kit to be yellow on in both these areas. So if you see a yellow med kit, what that's saying is, is there's no automation on this, but there is automation available. How nice. Um, now, in one of the settings, we said about, um, it said about the color HUDs. So let me just quickly pop back to that. Um, was it in mechanic options? No, it wasn't. Module, in module integration. So build a bonus colorized title bar. Dynamic active effects colorized title bar is connected with that. So I have that on. So this is telling me that shocking grasp on Sorryman it does have an automation available, but it hasn't got one installed. I can then come into here and say, well, what are the options? Oh, there's a Gambit version and a Chris's version. If I select Gambit's version, it changes it to this pink color. So now any item that has a pink kit, I know has a Gambit's automation on it. If it has a blue kit, Medi kit, I know it's got a Chris's pre-made automation on it. If it's yellow, it means it's got no automation, but there is one available. And if it's white, it's got no automation and there's none available for it. Okay, so that's how MediKit works. So Shocking Grasp is updated for Chris's. Uh, let's look at Catapult. I don't want to do that. I want to edit. We've got a white one there, which tells us that there's no automation and there's none available for it. Uh, we can look at True Strike. It's white, don't even need to click it. We know that there is no automation on it at the moment and there is none available. Speak with animals, no automation available. So we can go through everything like this uh, and that's the same spell and we can do it the same with some of these things like we can look at um, we can look at danger sense. <gasps> green, hang on, we haven't had green yet. If we click on green, uh, it's got a Chris's pre-mades in there. Why some of them are yellow, some of them are green? couldn't actually tell you there is a reason for it and I could look it up but I've forgotten <laughs> but um, I think it might be yellow is the fact that you've got Chris's but there's other options green is there's only Chris's I think that might be what it is so not just our spells but all of our items and abilities we can do exactly the same thing with so we can go through every one of these spirit of the totem bear oh look there we go Chris's pre-mates it's already done it Okay, so that's all very nice, isn't it? But that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work to go through and do that. So what they've brilliantly done is on the top of the character sheet, okay, next to that spanner in this little config thing, you can see Medikit. If I click that, it is looking at the whole of this character sheet and it is saying, hey, you've got five automations already in and hovering over it, it tells me actually you've got five Chris's pre-mades in. There's one available. There's a Gambit's pre-made available that's not installed. And I can just click update. And then it's going to do that. And what it's telling me is, ah, I spotted you had Reckless Attack there that didn't have automation on, but Gambit's automation is available. And because I hit apply, it's automatically updated. And we can prove that by just going into edit here. It's pink, so we know it's there. Um, there we go, Gambit's pre-made. So we can do an entire character sheet like that. Now, we're talking about player characters. Can we do it with these? Oh, I've got a medikit for Goblin. Uh, this is an NPC, and at the moment it says, this tab is not being used yet. You'll have to update NPC spell spells currently. So they're working on this. They've got the functionality ready to do. They've just been focusing on the player side. So um, there's just this little holding piece here. But that's what it will do for your monsters as well. Okay, a goblin doesn't necessarily need much doing to it. But you will have monsters that have lots of abilities and stuff. They just haven't quite got there yet. Be patient. Give them time. <laughs> the best thing has come to those who wait and all of that. So we can medikit Haley. So we, we just imported Haley again. We can click her medikit. She's got lots of spells because she's a cleric. Uh, and actually, it's already saying nine of these are already up to date and there's one more available. So for her, the command spell, that's the only one it hasn't automatically updated. 
well, it has now, and um, we've now got Gambit's um, command in there. So we can go again, go back to the, her spells. We can find that command spell. Don't do that. <laughs> right click and edit. There we go. It's pink. We've got Gambit's in there, and only Gambit's is available. So, I mean, that med kit is an absolute game changer when it comes to your characters. I'm just having a quick look. Have I got another? Oh, I've got two Sorrymans in here. Um, which one are you? You're Sorryman 1, I think. Let's jump jump out. Sorryman number 2. Medkit him. There we go, because I've not fiddled with him, so to speak. <laughs> Stop sniggering at the back. Um, none of them are up to date. Five available. Update is just, boom, there we go. That's all the ones it's done. Automatically, beautiful, he's ready to go. Um, I'd forgotten I had actually bought him in extra. So Medikit is, it's brilliant absolutely brilliant because you can shortcut all your stuff now i always say you know yes gambit stuff is brilliant chris pre-made stuff is brilliant um i think their stuff generally is superior to anything that comes in through ddbi um often the midi item showcase stuff is good but they tend to not tackle the really complicated stuff that chris and gambit do um, so there is kind of a hierarchy here, but just because it's Gambit doesn't mean it's going to be perfect and that it necessarily works with the automation options you've got set in MIDI QOL. Uh, and the same with Chris's. So I would say that you want to check everything. And in the next videos and things, we that's exactly what we'll be doing. We'll be checking things. We'll be going, is this version of Bane spell... Um, that is not automated is it actually working as we want it to if it is i'm sticking it in my own compendium uh, and i've been speaking with um, a couple of the channel members uh, members of this channel the awesome people that they are um, about potentially doing this and testing these things and creating ourselves a core compendium but actually we can go look well we've tested all of these things we're really happy with it let's stick them in a compendium all together and then we can share that compendium and any items let's say for example Bane it's not automated and that we need to fiddle with an update and get working we can do that and chuck that in compendium as well and what it means is for anybody who's locked into version 12 D&D 3.3.1 we end up with a compendium that we know tried and tested those things work make everybody's life easier drag and drop so that's the plan Okay, right. Part three of this video then is going to be looking at the defreds issue. Because, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, defreds is... It, it, it's still there. And it has been released in its version 12 format. Um, but it is a shadow of its former self. Not because of the people um, behind the scenes working on it, not at all, that would be very unfair, but because of the massive changes in the background to the way that Foundry works, differences between V11 and V12, um, obviously there's a big change to regions, but there's a massive change to the way that conditions are applied to characters and stuff. So it's a really, really challenging thing to do. Uh, and Chris's pre-maids used to rely on defreds, so no defreds, no Chris's pre-maids. Um, and as I said at the beginning, a lot of, and I've said it before as well, a lot of the work that Chris's team have been doing, and Gambit's team, and Posny with MIDI QOL and all of those people, um, is to try and remove the reliance on other people's modules as much as possible. Warpgate was kind of the start of that journey where version 12. Uh, in um, it was discovered that there was actually it wasn't Foundry it was the D&D &D engine specifically um, it introduced massive problems so that's what we're going to look at for this next section slightly odd little edit there apologies okay donkey so what we want to do then is look at uh, the settings again to show you what the defreds replacement Chris's inbuilt kind of version of that looks like. Uh, interface options. So do you remember I mentioned enable effect interface, enable macro interface, and I had both of those on. What does that give us? Well, if you look over on the top hand, uh, top right hand side, where we've got our chat windows and everything else, we've got a couple of new ones. 
macros and effects. If I click the macros one, we've now got in that right hand side the macros bar. We can right click it to pull out that macros directory and that's exactly the same as all the way over in the opposite corner, the bottom left, we've got the little folder here for the macros directory. Oops. It's just a different way of being able to see those. So that's potentially really quite nice, nice and tidy, rather than this tiny, see, I can't even hit it, tiny little folder down in the left hand corner. Actually, we've got all those macros there. So it's, it's just much nicer um, to be able to organize and see your macros. So you, as you saw in the options, you can have that switched on or switched off. But the exciting one is the one next to it, effects. Look at this. Does this remind you of anything? So again, it's still a work in progress um, because all of Chris's is, is, is kind of is a work in progress. It's still being tested and some things are still being written as we've seen. But look at all of the conditions here, bleeding, blinded, burrowing, charmed. They're all in here for us to be able to apply just like you did in Dfred. Now, for a lot of people, that was their main use of Dfreds. I don't want to have to go into Sorryman and do, 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 do and find the thing and then I go he's poisoned but does that actually poison him we've got it here um, and we can we're going to pick three different things so Sorryman for example we can uh, well let's let's say that Sorryman is poisoned we can poison Sorryman it says he's poisoned if we get the little flag as we would expect and um, uh, oh it doesn't show it under our um, our passive effects here because it is a, uh, a condition rather than an effect. Um, with Haley, we're going to, sorry, Haley, we're going to blind Haley. Um, now, just keep an eye on what the lighting does when I click this. Haley's blind. So <laughs> it actually impacts the player's token. So if your player is blinded, <laughs> they're not going to see anything they can they are blinded proper blinded how much better is that like properly uh, kind of integrated now obviously while i've got uh, while i've got a token selected it's going to do that if i unselect the token it will remove it um what are we going to do to this this goblin let's do something horrific to this goblin as well um we could incapacitate let's paralyze this goblin okay so let we're going to paralyze him. Now, what you'll notice is the goblin's got two effects on there because if you are paralyzed, you are also considered to be incapacitated. So it's put both of those on there. Not just paralyzed, but it's also added incapacitated. Uh, and if we look on the goblin's... Um, uh, on the goblin's character sheet again because this is not an effect it's a condition on there but you can see incapacitated condition has been ticked and paralyzed condition uh, and on Sorryman's yes we got no effect up there because it's a condition that is applied and the same with Haley. but do these actually do anything uh, apart from put up nice little icons and in Haley's case blind the poor sausage well let's find out let's run a combat with these individuals who are all in a quite horrific state of repair the goblin is going to go first hang on a minute he's incapacitated he can't do anything um yes as the dm of course i can move him and stuff but he's actually can't do anything so we can move on to Haley. Haley is blind so Haley can't see i, I can't target anything because i can't see it <laughs> So what happens if Haley tries to make an attack roll? And I don't know the answer to this. I mean, it, it's it's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Um, because I already had it selected, and you might need the DM to try and uh, do that selection for you, Haley did try to make an attack there. It did allow me to roll the dice. Um, does it tell me if I hover over... Uh, if I hover over blinded... Blinded creature can't see and automatically fails any ability check. Attack rolls against creatures uh, against creatures have advantage and the creatures attack rolls have disadvantage. So Haley should have rolled at disadvantage then, but she didn't. Um, so that's not 100% working and that is more than likely a setup issue rather than the... Um, the uh, that the Chris's pre-made effect but that's the kind of thing that 
people are testing and kind of going, well, hang on a minute, it's not doing that, and those guys are working on, or they come back and say, no, it's your settings, it's nothing to do with us. <laughs> I suspect it's my settings, uh, probably something in MIDI QOL that I've not set yet. Okay, so uh, Haley, you missed, which is not a surprise. Uh, sorry, Mun's go. Who is poison? So let's just check us, remind ourselves what poison does for us. A poison creature has a disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. Okay, so in theory, if Sorryman's going to attack this poor goblin, uh, do you know what it was? I bet I know what it is. Haley has disadvantage because she's blind, the, uh, but she gets advantage because the goblin's incapacitated and they cancel each other out. I bet you that's actually what it is. Which means Sorryman is going to have disadvantage attacking this goblin, but the goblin, but he has advantage because the goblin's incapacitated. I suspect we're going to see the same with Sorryman, is he's going to do a normal roll because they're going to cancel each other out. Uh, Sorryman, uh, the wide, reckless attack. Would I like to use my reckless attack? Remember we updated that? I'm going to say no. Uh, and Sorryman has indeed made a normal roll because his poison disadvantage has counted has been counted out by his advantage attacking incapacitated thing so again you know there's me kind of going oh no this one didn't work i need to look at it i don't think i do what if i attack Haley? so um haley's got disadvantage um so yeah again we're gonna have the same problem aren't we so the best thing to do is to take this goblin uh, and we can remove those effects from the goblin okay whoops no longer incapacitated. Now, if Sorryman attacks that goblin, we should see that he's doing it at disadvantage because there's nothing to counter that. Yes, there we go. So you can see 2d20kl keep lowest for that because it's Sorryman. He does kick some serious butt. Um, yeah, he rolled a 16 and a 14. So he has still hit. He has still killed that goblin. So that, that that's really good. That's really good. So it's not my settings. It's certainly not the item itself. Um, it was because I did that. So Haley is blinded. So we're going to try the same with Haley and see if she can now make that attack correctly. Let's clear that chat. Uh, and Haley, even though you're blind, you should be able to. There we go. So again, that's going to work. 2d20 keep lowest, which is disadvantage. So unexpectedly, what we've just demonstrated there is not only that we can apply these effects, um, these effects do impact combat and it is smart enough with all of the automation stuff we've got to say who has advantage over whom in certain things and who has disadvantage and when advantage and disadvantage counter each other it puts you back to normal, which is exactly rules as written. Now, I'm not necessarily always a fan of rules as written, advantage counters advantage, um, and rules as written say, if you've got five things giving you advantage and one thing giving you disadvantage, well, then it's a flat roll. I'm, I'm, really? I would say that I still get advantage because there's a lot more going on my side than there is against me, but rules as written... And it's not that often that comes up, to be fair. Not unless you've got higher level characters with lots of spell casting and stuff like that. So, this remains with this wonderful bar here that is able to do things. Now, bearing in mind, if you've got macro writing and stuff, you can call a CPR effect, cursed, concentrating, frightened. You can call that effect to apply it. So, the question is... Do we need defreds? And my answer for me is no. What is defreds giving me? Or rather, what, what was defreds giving me that I can't get from CPR now for my usage and what I do with it? And the answer is, I at the moment, I can't think of anything. It's been a while since I was using defreds because it hasn't been around in V12. It's been several months. Um, I don't need it. And thanks, thanks for your hard work to get it back to where it was. But Dfreds is not doing what Chris's is now able to do instead. So it's another module that actually it's like brilliant. Thanks, thanks for when it was around in the bin. Oh, not in the bin. That's a bit harsh. Um, but yeah, I'm just not going to install it. I don't need it. Of course, if you are 
used to using dthreads and you're going yeah but this is not covering it of course go look at dthreads it might be useful for you but i don't think it forms part of the core automation set now i really don't talking of which let's have a final look at our modules that we've covered as part of this series um so far because we are going to continue and look in some more detail so the core of all of our automations we started off with midi qol because that powers automated roles and everything else like that um and that goes hand in hand with the dynamic effects using active effects the dae okay they've got to go hand in hand we looked at ddb importer for pulling stuff in directly from D, D beyond if you use that uh, then we looked at bringing in gambits pre-mades because it helps with that i've got tidy 5e sheets on that's nothing to do with what we're doing now apologies um, gambits pre-mades which brings in a whole bunch of stuff that nobody else has tackled um, regarding things like attacks of opportunity and stuff um, we've got times up which controls the ending of our spells and effects and abilities so it automates the ending of those things which is brilliant uh, and we've looked at Chris's pre-mades which obviously in this video covers all of those items still to come spells some still to come and those conditions and of course the other modules that wrap around that jb2a for our animations um, we've got build a bonus which supports Chris's pre-mades now the good thing is these two work hand in hand so if we're using build a bonus to make our own items it's already kind of in there as part of that automation process uh, which is really nice region attacher was also brought in because some of the spells we need to create a region of darkness for the darkness spell um, so it attaches the spell to that region that it's created and all of those sorts of bits in the background so if you are choosing let me untick the ones that are not directly related to the automation um, this is currently our setup okay of what we've got in there we don't need spotlight omni search for the automation and we don't need tidy 5e sheets i should have removed that before uh, starting this video irrelevant doesn't impact anything here um, but that's kind of what we've covered so far and we've looked at in the next video what we're going to do is we're going to return back to ddbi because i'm not going to do it now but if you remember when we were in here and we were looking at automation we've got all of these little well most of them are now green about it bringing in full automation if we've got those others in well now we do have dae midi qo old times up active auras we've got chris's pre-mades in as well now we are automated animations active token effects we haven't got in so in the next video we're going to bring those in and we're going to rerun ddbi importer and pull everything in with all the automations automatically and then we can say do you know what we're importing with as much automation as possible and then we've got medkit to, from Chris, Chris's pre-made from CPR to then make sure everything is updated whether it's from gambits etc and then we should be able to say all of our stuff is as good as it's going to get for now um, and then we can move on to some testing from there caveat that Chris is still Chris's team is still working on things right what do you think are we happy are we happy that we're pretty much there now for whatever it was you had in v11 automation wise we've got it in v12 albeit a few items still to come i think so i think it and i think it's better i think we've got more from gambit we've got more from chris's pre-mades um awesome awesome stuff i love it <laughs> i gotta shut up uh leave a like drop a comment if you've got any concerns about specific things to do with automation um not necessarily you know oh well i've got all of this and i can't do this one thing i'm happy to try and help with that but i'm not the best at debugging those but certainly if you've got like, yeah but this is the sort of thing i want to automate that you haven't kind of covered um yeah let us know we can look at it um you know we can see if we can solve some of these problems we will go through a whole bunch of these items and i'll be asking you guys to suggest items that you think are 
in inverted commas broken or not automated that we potentially can look at as well and of course uh, not only the comments and the likes but uh, if you're not subscribed to this channel please do so it really does help out um, and just a reminder that there is a Kofi coffee link in the description if you wanted to drop me a few pennies that would be lovely and there is of course the YouTube membership as well um, again if you wanted to however if you're thinking about doing either of those two things do the community a favour and go drop it to Gambit or Chris or Amber or Michael or um, Lonely Bugbear or Moto Moto or go and drop it to those guys who are absolutely working that. I miss Chris Posney, <laughs> Tim Posney, sorry, um, Tim Posney as well, Midi QOL. These guys are absolutely working their asses off in the background to help our experience of Foundry and improve it, not just for their own games, but for all of us. Um, so they deserve your gratitude far more than I do. Um, but yeah, if you, can, if you can afford it, it's always nice just to send them a, a little thank you. Take care, everyone. I will see you in the next video.